Okay, in this video, I'm going to be doing a comparison of some of the processors and socket types. And I'm actually fortunate enough to have a lot of them here in front of me. I'm missing a few exceptions. Um, and I will go, I will talk about them as I get to that point. So, anyway, uh, my first one that I have, the oldest one, is an AMD K6, which is kind of the equivalent of a Pentium processor and this is you know obviously from AMD as you can see on the back that's what it looks like so not a whole lot of processing power in this great big chip from 1997 3.2 volt core 3.3 volt IO nowadays that would burn up a processor pretty quick if you hit that 3 volts but this is a 233 megahertz processor so then we move on, step up. This is a Pentium 3 from Intel. I am missing the Pentium 2, which was a slot processor. But this is a Pentium 3 and from 2001. And this is 1.133 gigahertz. Let me take a look at the back as well. So it's actually pretty similar to the AMD. A few more pins on the Pentium 3. Okay, so then Intel moved up to the Pentium 4, socket 478, which is this one here. So we can see a drastic increase in pins and a much smaller uh, package. So what we get here is just this is just you know a smaller nanometer um, process in, in creating this processor. Then we're going to move into AMD's, which I don't know if the 775 came first or the AM2, but anyway, I've got the AM2 here, and you can see we gain a lot of pins here compared to here. But obviously this is getting the memory controller built in and some other features, so it required, I think this is 940 pins, I believe, from this 478. And then either before or after that Athlon, Intel switches over to a no-pin design processor, and this is a 775 and the pins are actually on the motherboard which most people know so actually if you look from Intel to Intel that's what you get between their two Pentium and so of course the Core 2 Duo and Core 2 Quad were on this particular chip here now we move up this is an 1155 and it's pretty similar to the 1156. I don't have an 1156, but this one, this is close. So here is the 1155 in comparison to the 775. About the same package size, but a whole lot more pins on the 1155. And I don't have a 1366 is another one that I'm missing. But it will be, obviously, 1,366 pins, so it'll be bigger than this one. But this gargantuan here is the new 2011. And I'll pop this open. And so this is their newest socket that came out in 2011, the end. So this is being very careful this was very expensive so this is the new core i7s and the old core i7 1155 and then 2011 so the 1366 will be in between these two not quite as drastic as this one but a little bit bigger than this so this will give you the pin size difference on a second generation Core i7 and a third generation 
Core i7. Well, of course, this is Sandy Bridge E on the right as well, too. But this is the difference between Sandy Bridge E and Sandy Bridge. You can tell there's a lot more going on on the enthusiast level chip. Of course, this is also a $600 chip compared to, you know, a $300 i7 1155. Okay, so we'll take another run down through them again. Mostly this video, I just wanted to kind of show off the size of the 2011 CPU and kind of where we've come from, from back in the days when I had my first computer, which was actually this AMD K6, uh, came out of my, uh, well actually my second computer, my first one was actually a 486 SX, and I still have that, but the uh, processor is soldered to the board, so I could not remove the processor, but it's obviously, you know, even smaller yet than this, the 486 SX was. So as we move along, We get all of these processors throughout the ages, and then we come up to where we are now. And I couldn't even guess the amount of performance difference between the K6 and the i7. Uh, it's got to be hundreds of times faster and more efficient. But uh, so anyway, kind of showing off the 2011 socket processor. Uh, and in comparison to some of the last generation processors and even before then. So I hope I, uh, you guys enjoy this video and as always thank you for watching.